This video is going to be an antithesis as to the entire concept of working out for bodybuilding sake and getting in the gym to get jacked and not be so insecure and skinny. Probably you can relate to that because definitely I can. And if you're watching this video, you're probably a lot like my younger self. So I used to go to the gym. I started when I was 13. So I had been going to the gym for approximately four years at this point. And the first three were, well, for the first like couple months, three, and then basically until a month ago, were essentially me going there and going to the gym just because I wanted to rid myself of my own insecurities. The concept that I was literally built like a toothpick, I couldn't stand. I couldn't stand walking around the hallways and having this t-shirt on that was size medium, but barely even fit my arms. I couldn't stand it. Like you could like, it was like the, my arm was literally like this narrow, like the shirt was like this and then my finger was like that. No, the shirt was like this wide and my arm was like that, like this, it was bad. It was bad and I looked to the gym to solve that insecurity. And I actually did get a lot bigger, a lot stronger. Maybe I'll make the thumbnail of this video my transformation if the Lord wills it, but the transformation didn't do anything. The transformation, it was just a cover up. You watching this, you could probably relate to the fact that even if you do, even if you have gone through that body transformation, that maybe if you were fat, more like would be anorexic like I was, or like built like a little toothpick, and went from that to being jacked, then you could probably relate to the fact that it probably did nothing for you. That you're still insecure, that you still have body dysmorphia, and you don't have that much self-confidence, not as much as you thought you would. Right? We all saw the um we all saw Alex Eubank and Jeff side. And we thought, oh, if I had a physique like that, then I would never have my shot for anxiety. We all saw those physiques and we thought if I if I would look like that, then I would be so much more confident. You wouldn't. Trust me, I've been through it. The body transformation, it doesn't do anything to fix any kind of insecurity problems. It doesn't do anything to solve the three most basic needs of humans, which is love, acceptance, and security. It doesn't do anything to solve that because it's a worldly solution to a spiritual problem. When we feel insecure in ourselves, we basically tell ourselves that we are inadequate, that at our current state, we are not enough to fulfill the needs of acceptance, love, and security. That we're too skinny to be accepted. That we're too frail to be loved. And we're too insecure in ourselves to be secure with other people. Side note, that's why teenage relationships don't work out. That's why most high school relationships don't work out. It's because everyone's too insecure within themselves. And no one has that connection with Christ who tells them the exact opposite of everything you tell yourself. You tell yourself you're skinny and that you're not good enough. He tells you you're fearfully and wonderfully made and that he loves you. That's what you have to understand. This whole weightlifting thing, I'm not opposed to it. I'm not opposed to working out, of course not. But what I am opposed to is going to the gym and solely relying on that to be the crux of what you use to solve your insecurities that are only solved through a relationship with Jesus Christ. That's my problem. In 1 Corinthians 6.20, and I've used this verse a lot in my videos, it says, glorify God in your body. Glorify God in your body. Now, what does this mean? Well, we could say glorify, let's just take the first, like the first and the beginning, first and the last part of this, that verse. Glorify your body. Okay. Um, glorifying your body, what would that mean? That would probably just mean being healthy. Right, that would probably just mean, in the context of that chapter in Corinthians, it would mean keeping yourself away from sins and perverse actions that would damage your body physically. So let's say adultery. You know, maybe you get an STD or something like that. Just a random example. But keep your body away from the things that are going to make it unhealthy. Because you, your body is the temple for the Holy Spirit. And it's probably easier to magnify that Holy Spirit through a relationship with God when the vessel is healthy rather than when it's not. So we're called to keep ourselves healthy. And in shape. Okay, so how do we do that? One of the ways that we do that is obviously the gym. Okay. And now let's take the middle part of the verse. Glorify God in your body. Glorifying God. So this means that we're not doing it for ourselves here. This doesn't mean that we're going to the gym because we want to get bigger. Or we want to get stronger. Or we want to look a certain way. 
What it means now is that we're glorifying our relationship with God. This guy up, up there, not down here, not here, not this physical body up there. We're glorifying God in how we treat our body. We have the vessel for the Holy Spirit. That's our bodies. It's the temple for God's presence within us. So we're called to keep it healthy, not for ourselves and not because we want to be comfortable in our own skin or because we want to have that sick body transformation that we saw on YouTube, that we want to look like David Laid, but we do it for the glory of the Father and we do it to amplify our relationship with him. We're not called to be these massive bodybuilders. We're called to be healthy. We're called to be active and we're called to be fit. And again, not for the sake of yourself, not because you want to look, you want to look better with the shirt on, not because you want your, the sleeves to hug your arms. We don't do it for that reason. If you actually understand your God in general, and you actually understand bodybuilding, you'd agree with me. Because our relationship with God is number one. And through that, everything else that we want is fulfilled. What does Matthew 6.33 say? Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. That includes your bodybuilding progress. So we seek first the kingdom of God. Okay, how do we seek first the kingdom of God when it comes to bodybuilding? Okay, so glorify God in your body, as it says in verse six, 1 Corinthians 6.20. Glorify God in your body. So we're not glorifying the perceived antidote to our own insecurities. We're glorifying the Heavenly Father who tells us these things such as, you're fearfully, wonderfully made, Psalm 139, 14, that you're loved, uh, basically in the entirety of Romans, and he has, has a ton of faith in you and wants the best for you, is for you, and will never leave you nor forsake you. Read the entire Bible for reference for that one. So we have a God that says all these things about us. And now let's take into consideration the concept that God can't lie. So God... Let's use the duality of the God and the devil here. So the devil is a liar. Okay, so Satan, he can only lie. He lives off of lies. He basically is self-deception incarnate. So the devil can't lie, right? And the devil can lie, okay? And he only does. All right. So now we're going to take the flip, the flip the switch, because God is the opposite of the devil, and the devil is the opposite of God. So if the devil is full of lies, then God, the opposite, has to be only truth. So God can only tell the truth. He's always right, always. So when he says that he loves you, that you're fearfully wonderfully made just the way you are, and that he wants a deep, meaningful, and intimate relationship with you, and will never leave you nor forsake you, and he's for you, always, he's not lying. We're talking about the God of the universe here, the one who created you. The person who thinks that they'll be able to go to the gym, and then all through that, all of their insecurities and dreams are going to be solved. That when they make all the money that they want, then they'll be, feel free and fulfilled. That when they retire their parents, then they'll be happy. That when they find that nice future wife and raise a family in the middle of the woods, then they'll be happy. God's truth reigns above yours. You're not supposed to live on your own standards of what you consider right and wrong. You're supposed to live under God's. It's his house, so it's his rules. Since he created the entire universe, so whose rules are you actually following? Whose rules are you actually abiding by when you go to the gym just because you wanted to be not as skinny and that you're uncomfortable in your own skin that you're insecure so you sought after a worldly solution the gym to solve a spiritual problem that could only be fulfilled through a genuine relationship with god so who are you really serving because if you're not serving god you're serving satan you can't serve god and man in matthew 6 24 so who are you actually serving who is your god who is your idol is it the gym itself is it money is it fame is it popularity at school is it social media likes? Is it validation? Is it lust? Is it anger? Is it gluttony? Everyone has their own God. You watching this, you've probably had your own God in the past, assuming you haven't accepted Christ into your life, or you still do. You worship false idols. That's what's known as idolatry. When you look to an, when you make an idol out of something by attaching your self worth and who you are and who you perceive yourself as a person to it, that isn't God. So let's say the gym, let's say some habits. Let's say um, making money online. Let's say doing well in school. You attach your self-worth to these things and you look to it for guidance, self-worth, self really, and understanding. And it's not God. 
So therefore it's adultery, and therefore you've sinned, and you've become an anemone against the Lord. This is the same thing that happens when you go to the gym, and you do it for yourself. So brother, take this video as a warning. Stop going to the gym and expecting the gym to solve all your insecurities, because it didn't for me. If anything, my body dysmorphia was only worse when I actually had the transformation that I wanted. The transformation that you probably might see as the thumbnail in this video. When I had actually done that and I came out to the other side, well, after I had thought that me having bigger arms and a slightly larger chest would be the antidote to all my pain, I was still going through the exact same pain. I was still relapsing three times a day on NoFap. I was still playing video games on my phone. I was still death scrolling on YouTube shorts the entire day. I still was rude, lying, lusting. I was still doing all these things. The transformation didn't do anything because it didn't have a relationship with God. So the message of this video, brother, again, as I say in all of my videos, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added to you that you want. Now, when it comes to bodybuilding and fitness in particular, we're called to glorify God in her body, not you. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen.